Good evening everyone and welcome to Memorial Coliseum for tonight's game between the IPFW Mastodons and the Valparaiso Crusaders. I'm Brian Bowes, joined by the professor, Randy Schiffman. I just professor. sprung that on him. I just sprung that. IPFW comes into this game, their third game of the season. Number one win in the Dayton Fife area era last week. Oh uh, yeah, just two nights ago and that was big winning on the road and playing well and the reason that they won this one as opposed to the first game shot 41% against Southeast Missouri State, shot only 32% in the home loss to Loyola Chicago. When you talk about IPFW, I think they're going to be a defensive team and that would make sense. Dane Fife, the former Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, and that definitely showed they held Loyola to 69 points. Loyola on Monday scored 99 points against Evansville and Dane Fife has said it right from the get-go, our defense is going to be the key. If we win any games, it's going to be because of the defense, because the offense definitely a work in progress. Well, just a couple of moments ago, Velpo coach Homer Drew stopped by, had a few words for us. He's a nice guy, but their team kind of nasty at times. Talk about them. Yeah, they could be really good. Dan Oplin is a stud, averages about 19 points a game. They have a guy, Mohamed Kone, a junior college transfer, NBA prospect, 6'11", 240, and athletic. That's a good combination if you're a Valpo fan. Very good combination. And, of course, they have Seth Cole Glazier, former Belmont star, averaged about nine points a game last year. And as you remember from Belmont, he can shoot the ball, he can shoot the threes, a great free throw shooter, best free throw shooter in Indiana history. He can also take it to the rack. You think the Mastodon should be concerned? They're, well, you got to say they're an inexperienced team. This Velpo team, very experienced, the veteran squad. However, Velpo hasn't played a game this year, very unusual. Downs have played too. Valpo hasn't played any, so maybe a little advantage there for the Downs. We'll find out. They've played twice these teams the last two years at Valpo. Valpo won them both last year, was on a uh, late basket, and then IPFW had a disputed tipping at the end of the game that would have tied it. Ref said no go, and Downs lost that one by two. Well, it should be an interesting one. Valparaiso 2 0 against these Downs all time. Tip off is coming your way. You're watching Downs basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, Stomp. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. This broadcast is a production of College 56 at IPFW, in conjunction with UPN Fort Wayne. Welcome back to Memorial Coliseum. Brian Bowes along with Randy Schiffman. Time for tonight's starting lineups. We'll start with the Crusaders from Valparaiso, their first game of the season. At a guard, they'll start Jimmy Miles, a six foot two junior from Country Club Hills, Illinois. At the other guard, a six foot sophomore from Lincolnwood, Illinois, Jared Lloyd. At one forward, and look out for this guy, Randy, He's Ron Howard, one of your favorite names oh, around. You know, he was a great director. He wasn't bad as Opie. Amazing <laughs> at his age that he has eligibility left. Oh, no, it's not that Ron Howard. It's a six foot five, and we'll find that out soon enough. Six Wonder foot if he five has red hair like Opie. From Chicago. At the other forward, look out for this guy, too. We talked about him in the pregame. Dan Oplin, a 6'8 senior from St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, this man can score 19 points a game, and all the Downs coaches have told me this is the guy they have to control if they can't keep him uh, guarded. They're in trouble. And finally, an enigma wrapped in a secret. We don't know much about this guy, except he's a junior college transfer, Mohamed Kone, a 6'11 senior center from Lyon, France. NBA-type prospect. For the Dons, same starting five that they had in the home opener. 
junior Quinn Carruthers will start at one guard. He's six foot three, 185 pounds. He'll be joined by the other guard, Brad Pompey, a six foot one, 185 pound junior. Situation with him, he's leading the team in rebounding. That's scary from a guard. Yeah, that's very scary. DeWitt's got to avoid it. He have a great game. 24 points the other night against Southeast Missouri State. Four out of four from three-point line. Yeah, DeWitt, as you can see there, is a forward. He'll be starting alongside Justin Hawkins from Garrett, Indiana, and Tyler Best, a six foot nine, 240-pound forward from Lafayette. So it's shaping up to be a good one. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of Mo Essinger in there, too, because Mo, at his size, is a great shot blocker and a great rebounder, and they may need him to go up against Kone, because Kone is 6'11", 240, and athletic. We can't forget the end athletic part. A very big team, as Randy alluded to, with the Valparaiso Crusaders, but you look at, well, the, the guts that IPFW showed on the road in their last game, and that has to be a motivating factor coming into this one. Oh, yeah, and the Don's coming off that win at Southeast Missouri State. Got a little momentum, but they didn't get much time to enjoy it, Brian, because that game ended about 45 hours ago. This is also a big game for the Dons, too, when you look at, well, the fact that, and I want to talk to you about and we'll talk about this as the game goes on. If you can beat a mid-con opponent That's right. from a conference that you've been trying to get into for two or three years from now, what does that say to the mid-con, especially one of their elite programs? Right. Big game for the Dons tonight. Dane Fife talked about that in uh, the Dane Fife show that led right up to this. Anytime they play a team from the mid-counter of the horizon, it's doubly important, of course, Loyola Chicago, who they played in the opener, from the horizon. Well, we're just about ready for tip-off here. Tyler Best matching up against... Kone. He Kone. doesn't look 6'11", Kone. <laughs> ball, ball goes to the Crusaders to start, and they'll set up the offense against a man-to-man -man defense from the Dons here. Almost all man-to-man -man by the Dons. That's, in a way, Dane Fife played in college, and that's the way he's having his guys play. The outside jumper, air ball there, rebounded by Oplin. He'll take it out behind the three-point arc, and that's something you have to look at from the Valparaiso team. They'll shoot from anywhere on the court. That was an ugly first shot, and remember, it didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock didn't reset. They only have 10. That one brought inside the reverse layup. That one falls for Jimmy Miles, 2-0 Valparaiso. That one was a little too easy, and Valpo going full-court pressure right from the get-go. Brad Pompey will bring it up. Got to pass that ball. That was, that was way too late. Off by Ron Howard. He will go in for the easy deuce. And just like that, a 4 to nothing advantage. That pass was way too late. The downs looked like they weren't ready for the pressure. Once again, the 2-2-1 full court pressure from Valparaiso. Carruthers big guys, will bring it up the middle. He'll break it. The big guys have to come back and help against the pressure. Great pass there by Carruthers to Tyler Best inside. That's how you break it. You got to pass to break the to break the pressure and you also have to make crisp passes you can't just float them in there because they'll get picked off like the first one is. work it inside down to upland he's got his back to the basket comes in draws a foul and that basket wait and see here that's good that will count so a basket in one for upland you know one strange thing about guarding upland brian and it seems obvious but it's not as the downs take a 30 second timeout he's left-handed most of the guys you guard when you play ball your whole life are right-handed. It takes a bit of an adjustment to guard a lefty. DeWitt Scott charged with the foul there. Not the start Dane Fife wanted, I'm sure, 6-2. to two. One thing you can expect from this Valparaiso team, at least from all the scouting re reports, is they're a half-court team. So far, they've been running a little bit, setting up quickly in the half-court and getting it inside on the dots. Well, when you press, a lot of times that'll set up the easy baskets like uh, the second basket that the Crusaders got. And I think that's what uh, Dane Fife just wanted to go over with with the players is about the pressure. What you got to do against the pressure is we're looking at a replay here. That's Oplin inside with the left hand. O'Brien, and when I talk about when I talk about playing a lefty guy, when I talk about playing against the lefty, it's not just that he shoots with his left hand, right. but normally they're going to take the ball strong to the left where most righties take the ball, uh, ball strong to their right. Well, we will, since what I'm going on by is the scouting report, we'll refer to that a few times tonight. And it said left-handed a few times in that IPFW yeah. scouting report. And it also underlined, we must know where he is at all times. Now, there's a really silly foul. You're guarding a guy who doesn't have the ball 93 feet away from the other basket. What's he going to do there? So foul on Jared Lloyd, his first, team's first. There's and the Dons will go again. back at it again. This is that 2-2-1 two -two zone press we've heard about. See what the Dons can do against it. Now you see the Hawkins coming back to help out. And you get the guy in the middle. You don't want to dribble the ball to the sidelines against the press because the sideline becomes another defender. Scott to the basket, draws the foul, and gets the bucket. A three-point play for DeWitt Scott, or at least a chance for it. The old-fashioned three-point play. 
Good start for the Dons. Offensively, remember, we've talked about this uh, since the preseason, that they are going to struggle offensively. Dane Fife admits it. He goes, I'm putting in a whole new offense. Guys just aren't comfortable with it yet. Now it's a three-point play officially, 6-5. to five. Credit the foul to Jimmy Miles from Valpo. Back come the Crusaders this way. Lloyd has the ball out at the wing. Will Look at Carruthers Howard. fight through the pick. Now Lloyd into the paint, throws up the right-hander, won't get it to fall. Kone with the rebound. Oh, he's a monster out there. Can't get it to fall. Oplin now gets the roll. And that's something the Dons were afraid of coming into this game, Randy, the inside presence of Valparaiso. Too many chances for Valpo there. Tyler Best made a good move. He came over. His defender needed help. They got to get 10, 8. Uh. It's eight seconds in the NBA. Ten-second violation by the Dons. You have to throw the pass forward. You can't keep going backwards or sideways to break the press. 8-5, Valparaiso on top, and they take possession here. 17-51 to play in half number one. Press causing a lot of problems right now, but on that last uh, possession, Tyler Best made a good move to come over, but when he's there, someone's got to pick up Kone. Kone on the block, spins, somehow keeps control, tries the bank shot, can't get it to fall. Rebound comes out to Brad Pompey. He's also told about Kone, while he is very athletic, he doesn't really have the refined offensive game yet, and I think you saw it in that move. Pompey out top, setting up the offense. That was, almost a, five second, from that was almost a five second violation. Now it is picked off, up ahead to Oplin. He'll take it to the hoop, draws contact, no, no, no shooting shot. foul. That one on the floor. And Quint Carruthers will pick up his first foul. You say this team doesn't like the fast break? Could have fooled me. Looked like the Showtime Lakers right now. Well, maybe a different look for Homer Drew's team this year. Who knows? He's got a very veteran squad. Miles for three. That one off the mark. Rebounded by Carruthers. You Here know, Brian, the Dons. most coaches will tell you, if you have the break, take advantage of it. Because that is a huge advantage for the offense. Defense can't set up. You usually have uh, odd man combinations, two on one, three on two. Got to take advantage of it. Another turnover by IPFW. Here comes Valparaiso again. Early on, down four, on the block. four turnovers for the Dons, none for the Crusaders. Nice left-handed hook shot there by Oplin, and it's a 10-5 Valparaiso lead. See if they can break the press this time. Someone needs to be in the middle. Pompey brings it up baseline. That one kicked, and it'll reset the, reset the shot clock. Again, you see where he dribbled the ball down the sideline. He got there. There were two defenders waiting for him and the sideline. That's, that's a lot of trouble. Here comes Kyle Savely. Here's a guy who can probably break the press with the dribble. Savely will check in as Pompey leaves for substitution for either team. Hawkins will inbound it, and Savely has the ball. And for those of those, those, those of you, that is, who haven't seen Kyle Savely play, he reminds me of Jason Williams, who used to play for Memphis and Sacramento right, yeah. and now plays for the uh, Miami Heat. He's got, he's got that little swagger to him. Well, we just hope that he plays a little more under control than Jason Williams. That guy doesn't have the best reputation in the NBA these days. <laughs> no, but he, he's gotten a lot better. <laughs> he got better when he was with Memphis because uh, Jerry West was talking to him. Howard charged with its first foul. IPFW inbounds, working around. Savely fakes the shot. Nice fake. Drives and misses the bucket. Kone with the rebound. Tough to come in, uh, come in off the bench and have that for your first shot. Lloyd to the wing. Oplin shows his outside range. That's a three-pointer. Already nine points for Oplin. It's a 13-5 game. That's why they have to know where he is at all times. That one moved around and out of bounds. Another turnover forced by Valparaiso. And Dane Fife looks like he's a, at odds right now. He's going to go Brett back to his bench and bring back in Pompey. Well, Brian, that's five turnovers already for the Dons in under four minutes. No turnovers for the Crusaders. And that's why it's an eight-point lead for the Crusaders right now. The press has been the difference in the game. <laughs> the, fr the frustrating thing, though, too, Rand, is the fact that I think IPFW knew coming into this game, they run that 2-2-1 full court press, and they're not adjusting to it. No, not at all. Sean Huff also into the game for Valparaiso. He works it into Oplin, who gets that baby hook to fall. How about this guy? 11 points already. The TV timeout can't come too soon for Dane Fife and company. They That's a five-second count right there. Now they got to take the timeout. Well, Dane Fife already using his second timeout, and it will be another 30-second timeout. Things not looking good for IPFW right now. A 10-point deficit, and Valbrezo just controlling the tempo and controlling, well, every facet of the game. Plus, they got Mr. Oplin and his 11 points. But this is where coaching comes in. This is when you get your chance. I mean, there's a ton of time left in the game. There's almost 36 minutes to go. So this you got to make the adjustments right now. 
You might play poorly at first, but you got plenty of time to fix it. And you can't really say that the that IPFW's defense has been that bad because there's just been a lot of easy baskets right now for Valpo. You know, one of the little areas of the game, too, Randy, you look at the time, 15.52 on the clock. I'm sure Dane Fife didn't want to use that 30-second timeout because the television timeout is coming up. He really felt he had to. He was forced to. No, yeah, because they were they were close to another turnover for a 10-second violation. Now you get fresh clock to get the ball across the timeline. And you can't save the timeouts. You know, they don't hold over to the next day. Use them or lose them. I've seen too many coaches, Brian, just refuse to call a timeout, and it winds up hurting their team. Save Lee with the ball in the backcourt. Valparaiso looking for the trap here. He'll move it back to Hawkins, and finally the Dons cross half court. But the pressure stays on even if, as they uh, cross the court. Seth Coclazier out of Belmont High School in Decatur. In the game now, number 22, he's guarding Savely. Savely on the wing. He'll drive, stop, looks for Hawkins. Top of the key three, just off the front of the rim. That one picked up by Ali Burdeal. Alongside to Oplin, he's making everything and continues to. Wow, Randy, 13 points out of Velpo, 17 so far. And that's a hot shooter because he caught the ball and immediately shot it. You notice that Brian didn't put it on the floor. Now Pompey will fire up a three. That one off the mark, rattles around a bit. Nice hustle there by Pompey to get his own rebound. And Best kept it alive for him. IPFW will reset the offense here. Safely up top to Pompey on the wing. Pick and roll. Now into the wing. This one fired up and off the mark by DeWitt Scott. Nothing falling for the Dons. Everything falling for, well, Hoplin. Yeah. Yeah, he leads the game right now. <laughs> He's got 13 of the 17 points. That's a good night. Kone inside. That one's off. Again, Picked you up can by see Scott. Kone, he's got the skills, but they're just not refined. Savely all the way through. Now he finds Scott for a three. Another three by IPFW and off the rim. When you're not hitting it, Randy, at some point you just got to say, let's settle down and run the offense. That's right. That TV timeout again. It's going to come any minute now. now there's Oplin splitting the defense. I think he got a first down. <laughs> now inside, Sean Huff will get the bucket. And it's a 19-5 Valparaiso advantage now. And back to that 2-2-1 full court pressure. Savely brings it up. Finds Pompey. Nice drive to the hoop that time. Lays it in left-handed. Finally, a two-point basket, or at least a two-point attempt by the Dons. And you know what? When your outside shot's not falling, Coach Joey says take it inside. Whistle there, and it appears as if Hawkins is going to get called for the body there. 19-7 our score. Valparaiso on top. We'll take our first t TV timeout of the evening. This is Macedon's basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Coliseum, everybody. Right now, difference in this ball game. Valpo shooting 60% from the floor, zero turnovers. The Dons shooting 38%, five turnovers. Also, no assists for the Dons yet on their first three baskets, while four assists for the Crusaders. So, Valpo definitely running the offense like it wants to. The Dons a little slow getting it started, Brian. Yeah, well, it's been Valpo's game so far. And finally, their main weapon, Dan Oplin, gets a break as Musa Embe checks in. That shot off the mark by Ron Howard. That's and a silly over the back. There's going to be a foul there, yeah. 
Got to get in the book, though. You know, you get a foul, you get in the book. You actually played. <laughs> that one by M. Vi just got in the game, just got his first foul. That's the fourth foul on Valparaiso. Full and court pressure again. Z in for the Dons. Joko Edgerich. Now, I'm surprised uh, Homer Drew took Opland out because he's six out of six from the field, including one out of one for three-pointer. You know, we always say, if somebody's hot, you ride them until they cool off. Left side, Carruthers with a drive. Tricky shot, that one off. Edgerich had a hand on it, couldn't control it. Now the other way, Ali Burdiel brings it down. That's going to be a travel. One too many steps that time by Ron Howard. Talked about that in the opener, that the refs are definitely making it a point now to call the travel, and they even called carrying the ball the other night. You're kidding <laughs> yeah. me. Oh, I kid you not, my You'd friend. think it was a rule or something. <laughs> yeah. First turnover of the game for Valparaiso. See how they handle the press after the full timeout. That's Save much Lee. better. Ahead to Quentin Carruthers. He will press the issue, dishes off. Nothing there. They'll work the ball around. Nice ball movement here. Carruthers will get an open look. The three-pointer, he hits it. Big ball movement there, paid off. You know, Dane Fife said something very interesting to me the other day, that because the Dons don't practice out here at the Coliseum, that they don't shoot as well in here because the background is so different than where they're used to practicing at the, at the school. And he said the other teams pretty much get to practice here as much as we do, and sometimes it really affects our shooting performance, and I never really thought about it that much. And Valpo, well, I don't know about any of the guys on this team, but they had played here before when they held the Midcon tournament here. Well, Mohamed Esajir, who just checked in for the Dons, picks up his first foul, four each on both teams now. Inside move, that one partially blocked, and here comes the Mastodons on the break. Pompey with a nice move. He set, leaves it off for Savely, fakes the shot, now inside. The shot up there and off the mark. Here comes Valparaiso once again. Belmont product, Seth Colclasier brings it up to Burdeal. And we want to talk about Burdeal a little bit tonight too, Randy, about this kid who's had some, well, trouble with injuries, but is a real threat at times. Yeah, they think he's an all-conference kind of player as long as he's healthy. Safely to the bucket, can't get it to fall. I don't Tough know how break. that stayed out. Up again, no, and Valparaiso is going to come out with it. Don's unable to catch a break so far. That's a Jared, nice offensive rebound. Couldn't get it to go. Berdeal, the long three-pointer here off the front, and he's going to get the rebound himself. Now this time he'll drive. Uses his body a bit, pulls up, can't get it to fall. And Never even thought about passing that one. By Pompey. He might be coming out after that. Again with a crossover, Pompey can't get the runner to fall. That's two times in a row where Pompey has driven to the basket, Randy, and can't get one that one to fall. 19 to 10, our score. We'll take our second TV timeout. This is Don's Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Coliseum. It's a 19-10 Valparaiso advantage. 11.43 to play here in half number one. The Macedons will take control of the ball and set up the offense. Valparaiso been in control so far to this point. Quinn Carruthers into the lane. Nice dish. That one up and missed by Esajir again. That's he, been a problem with the, the Don so far tonight, Randy. Everything inside hasn't been able to fall. Esajir looked like he wasn't ready to get that ball. Perfect drive and dish by Carruthers. And I also thought that Mo got away with the travel there. 
good looks, but they just haven't get, been able to get them to fall. Essager inside. We get a whistle. This time they call the travel. And a travel. Even Steven. Already turnover number six against IPFW. Justin Hawkins will check in for Essager. Hawk has shot the ball very well the first couple of games. Looking to score more than he did his first couple of years. Only averaged three points a game. He's averaged uh, nine and a half so far. Coe Clazier out on the wing. Into Mohamed Kone. Hey, that one intercepted by Justin Hawkins. Here comes IPFW. And Kone has the size. I'm not sure he's got the skills yet. Carruthers with a drive, pulls up, can't get that one to fall. Huff with the rebound. Here comes Valparaiso. Lloyd will bring it up court. Takes the drive, and now they'll set up the offense. Inside to Mohamed Kone. Muscles his way in, throws that one up, can't get it to fall, but gets his own rebound. Now he'll get that one to fall. Just a big body in there. We talked about it before, Randy. He's going to be hard to stop if he gets some offensive skills. He's not going to miss from an inch. 21-10 our score. Carruthers back the other way. Nice dish that time. And again, the travel. And the Dons are not only shooting themselves in the foot, but those feet are moving while they're doing it. When you're six foot nine and you get the ball under the basket, there's no need to take a step. All you have to do is go straight up and lay it in, or even better, dunk it, because the dunk can't be blocked. Tyler Best will check back in. It seems like anybody who travels gets a seat on the bench, and <laughs> someone gets to come in for them. That one lofted up and in. Nice basket there by Jared Lloyd. 13-point lead all of a sudden. Well, IPFW is going to have to do something quickly here and get, in, get some shots to fall, or they're going to be fall, fall behind way too quickly. The shot up and missed. Fight for the rebound. Look at Oplin get dirty on the floor for it. Hawkins right in there with him. Don's come out with it. We always say it's not a game until Justin Hawkins hits the deck. Here's DeWitt. Inside, throws that one up, can't get it to go. Good move, bad shot. Left side. Sean Huff with it against Carruthers. Out to Kone. He's going to throw up the three and hits the front of the rim. You know, the problem, Brian, a lot of times when you fall behind double digits like this, you'll make a run, you'll come back, but then you run out of gas. Inside, Best with the pump fake, tries to get Kone off his feet, can't get it to fall. Randy... Cody doesn't have to leave his feet. Now 4 of 19 in the game from the field. I'm not a math major, but that's not good. Another bucket for Lloyd. It's 25 to 10, and Coach Fife has seen enough. Another 30-second timeout. What can you say about this Valparaiso team? They're controlling the temple. They're controlling the game to this point. Seven turnovers already by IPFW in just over 10 minutes. I mean, that's on a pace for 25-30. That is just unacceptable. Valparaiso has three. Uh, surprisingly, the rebounding is pretty even. 16 to uh, 13 in favor of the Crusaders, but just one assist so far for the Dons. I think one what, assist. What you think about with IPFW is defense, and they really haven't seen that on that side of the court as well. I mean, 25 points already about halfway through the first half. I mean, oplin has been shooting lights out, six for six from the field, but it's been other characters since he came out of the game that have been providing as well. I mean, a real team effort for Valparaiso so far. And guess who's coming back in the game? Dan Oplin. Just who we wanted to see here in Fort Wayne, huh? Not quite. And he, you could just see, see how he's walking out there? He's got the little swagger. <laughs> he's ready to go. He's six out of six. He wants more shots. You and I don't like blame players him. like that, don't you? Got to love a confident player like that. Hey, if you're backing it up, intercepted. nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it's the guys who think they're good and aren't. Those are the ones who bother. Are you a T.O. fan, too? You like Terrell? No. <laughs> I was very happy He's today. He's got a little swagger. When he lost his whole arbitration thing. <laughs> he, he, great player, bad teammate. Back to work we go. Valparaiso in control of this one. 25-10. Oplin on fire will drain that one. And you mentioned it already. Quick release. He's just in a zone right now. Again, you see the difference there, Brian? He's ready to catch the ball and shoot the ball. He doesn't have to catch the ball, gather himself, and think about what he's going to do. Oplin with 15 points now. And efficient. Seven out of seven, including one out of one from three-point land. The only thing he's missed is a free throw. Kyle Savely uh, drawn a blocking foul there. Actually, yeah, Valparaiso foul on Ron Howard. That's his second. Valpo's fifth so far. Well, I bet you somebody on the team calls him Opie. You think so? Oh, without question. Now, the real Ron Howard didn't like that nickname. What do you think about Valpo's Ron Howard? Savely with the bucket there. Kyle Savely, again, he really provides a spark off of the bench. 
Anthony Pravin doesn't like it. And then if you say you don't like it, they're going to call you it even more. You know how teammates can be. Kone inside, called for the travel. Just the second turnover by the Crusaders so far this evening. No block. Oh, one block shot in the game so far. Moessinger got a piece of one. Surprised. I thought Kone would have a couple of blocks, but uh, he really hasn't had much of an opportunity. The Dons settling for too many outside shots. T.J. Posley in the game for IPFW. He dribbles baseline to Hawkins. Now out to Scott. That one thrown up and off the high glass. Wow, what a play there by DeWitt Scott. And Kone went up and tried to block that one. Great adjustment in midair. And now it looks like we're going to get an offensive foul. They got up on for the wrap Racing. around there. The old NBA play where you, you wrap the uh, loose arm around the guy and you hook him a little and you dribble. Hopland's first foul, the team sixth. Don's trying to make a bit of a run here. It's 27-14. We got 8:23 to go in the first half. This you is hate looking this second time out too. You hate looking that far ahead, but by the time you get to halftime, the Don's would like to have it under 10. You know, conversely, Valpo's thinking we want to keep it double digits, and I think that's why Homer Drew called the timeout right now. He saw a little sloppy play over the last minute or so, and he realizes. You know what? Sometimes the team gets a big lead, you get a little comfortable, next thing you know, it's a ball game. I think you're absolutely right. It's a situation where you play such a good first half, and that's what Valparaiso's done so far. Well, it's almost a loss if IPFW could come back and cut it to a deficit less than 10 at halftime. I mean, right. That's the goal for IPFW, and that's what Valparaiso's trying to avoid right now. IPFW handling the press a little better now, but still not taking advantage. When you break the press, you got to make the team pay for it. You've got to get layups out of it, because if you do that, then the press gets a lot looser because guys start dropping back to try to help protect the goal. Scott with the ball. He dribbles into the paint and nails that one from the free throw line extended. He's starting to feel his rhythm. 27-16 now. He's got great form on the jumper and he scored 24 last time out. He shot the ball really well. That's what I call a slam. Mohamed Kone showing why he's the top juco player in the country coming into this game. Rated that coming into this one, and IPFW forced to call another T.O. Had to burn another one, another 30, just because it was going to be a five-second violation for not getting the ball in bounds. But Kone showed you that raw athletic ability there. He's a guy, you know, obviously he's got the size, definitely not ready for the NBA, but you could see him going over to Europe playing for a couple of years and then maybe coming back. But you know, you can't teach tall, as my coach used to say. You can't oh. teach tall. He's 6'11". You think about what the NBA looks for, and he definitely has the body for that. You can just see he's a giant out there. And pretty good footwork. He just doesn't have the offensive skills. But, you know, a lot of NBA teams, especially with the development league now, look at a player like that right. and maybe sign him as a free agent, draft him in that second round, which is so big now with NBA teams, and put him on one of these, you know, NBA development teams and see what happens. Yeah, but he looks big out here. In the NBA, he gets pushed around like he's nothing. That, that, that's men. Back to action. IPFW brings it up the sidelines. Scott starting to feel it. He's going to take the jumper here. Fills it again. That's three in a row for DeWitt Scott. He's four on eight now. Brian, I said it earlier tonight, and I'll say it every game. When you're hot, keep shooting the ball. Nine points for Scott, an 11-point game. Here's the alley-oop. That one tipped away. IPFW comes down with it. Now they're starting to play some of that patented defense. And you saw right there, too, Kone not really good hands as he went up to catch that pass. It wasn't that bad of a pass. Ball worked inside to Scott, and that one just off the fingertips. We'll take a timeout. 29-18, Valparaiso on top. This is IPFW basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
Hey, it's DeWitt Scott pulling up, hitting the jumper. Scott is hot right now. He's hit his last three. He's four out of eight. Got nine points. This on the heels of 24 points at Southeast Missouri on Monday. Keep feeding him the ball. He's right. hungry. Thanks to DeWitt Scott. It's an 11-point Valparaiso right game right now. It was at one point a 15-point advantage. Valpo with the ball. They work it around to Jimmy Miles. He works inside to Mohamed Kone. And he'll get the turnaround jumper to fall off the bank. It seems to be that's what Valparaiso's strategy is going to be tonight. Let's work it inside to our big man, take advantage of our size. Right. And if they start double teaming, Valpo will be looking for him in addition. There's the press causing another turnover and an easy layup. Berdillo with the two-pointer. And now Valparaiso getting to back to what worked early on in the first half. It's back up to 15. Almost a steal right there. But I'll tell you what, Howard was very close to getting another layup for the Crusaders. And right now, if you're uh, the Dons, there's Scott Fine. Oh, I was going to say finally missed, but I spoke just a little too soon. <laughs> I'm sure Dave Fife in the huddle's thinking, when we get to the ne next TV timeout, the uh, four-minute one, I'd like to see it under 10. 33-20 our score right now. Miles again into Kone. They'll play a little give and go. Miles will take the three-pointer off the rim. Hawkins fighting for the rebound, and it will come out. To IPFW. Uh, I thought the Dons were going to push it there. They had a four on three. There's a kick on Riedel. Well, just for a moment, Randy, I want to talk about the play of Justin Hawkins. You mentioned earlier it's not an IPFW game till you see Justin hit the floor. <laughs> Boy, does he work out there. Kind of an undersized player. You look at the numbers on Justin. I mean, he, he, he's not a big guy, but there you see him right in the middle with these guys. 6'6", 200 pounds. He's with the 6'11 guys fighting for every loose ball, every rebound. And if you get a look at his right eye, it's a little black and blue. He took a pop on uh, Saturday. He had a big cut under his eye, and afterwards he's like, does it look bad? And it's like, <laughs> you get those a lot, Hawk. <laughs> Quint Carruthers will step to the line. He was fouled on the last possession by Dan Oplin. Refs That's really the seventh team foul against Valparaiso. Refs hasn't, haven't blown the whistle all that much tonight, except for mostly traveling. Uh, only one free throw attempted so far by the Crusaders, only one by the Dons as well. Those are points when you're not a high-scoring team, you can't afford to give away points at the line. Especially down by 13 points as well. Take every point you can get. Brothers will attempt a second one. And the free throw, one of those shots that you can practice, it's the same in practice as it is in a game. There's nobody guarding you, the stripe doesn't move. Quinton gets that one to fall. 33-21 our score. Kone is showing those that one, and Carruthers will take advantage of it. To the rack he goes, and he's fouled by Berdiel. Berdiel thought he got it cleanly, and that's going to be an intentional foul. So it's going to be two shots, and the Downs will get the ball back. Now, I don't know if I agree with this. He definitely took a swipe at the ball. Downs are off the benches. If we could take a look at Coach Fife, he is incensed right now, and I don't blame him. Well, They're a difference of opinion right hurt. here. Homer Drew talking to both referees. He cannot believe that. Dane Fife unhappy that it wasn't worth. Let's here he look. goes. I don't know. I don't think that was a good call, honestly. I think he got the ball. He was definitely going after the ball, and that's the way the rule is supposed to be enforced. But the ref, you know, from our view, we were right under the camera, and you could see it there. Right. That was a great camera shot by our crew. But when the ref is trailing it, it looks like he's just taking a swing and trying to hit her. Well, Carruthers still down behind the basket. Dan Fox, worked on the right now by Dan Fox, yes. And now Coach Fife will make his way over there. You have to get permission from the coach, from the refs, excuse me, to go on the floor. Uh, that's what Dan Fife was waiting for over there. Well, we saw the replay. I mean, Ali Berdiel here, kind of shocked. I thought he went for the ball, too. I thought it was a situation where we went for the ball. Yeah, hard foul really got a part of Carruthers, but I, if you look at what Berdiel did, I mean, within the rules, he didn't get them on the back of the shoulder, didn't get him in the back of the head. I mean, he went for the hand, and now good to see Carruthers is up, and he's making his way back towards the Don bench. Seems to be hobbling. I don't think that's from the actual hit, but maybe the landing after the hit. Yeah, he's limping a little. It's either his right knee or his right ankle. Now, Don's could replace him and have somebody else shoot the free throws. So a lot of times coaches will do that, and they'll try to find their best free throw shooter, and it looks like Savely uh, might be coming in to shoot the free throws. I'm not sure. It could be uh, DeWitt Scott, too. Well, it appears as if Savely's going to come in, and then he will shoot the free right. throws as well. Okay, yes, you're correct. Carruthers will take a seat, 
and Savely will shoot the free throws. 33-21 oh. our score the will get the ball on too. top. Yes. So this could be a big swing here for IPFW. Just one call. Homer Drew continuing his conversation to plead with one of the officials on how that could have been made. Savely misses the first shot there as well. well. Tough to come right off the bench and shoot it, I guess. He'll hit this one. The second technical will go. It's an 11-point game. And that's actually, those were the two shots on the, on the foul itself. Correct. Now comes the technical. Scott will make that. Take a step back and now go for two. So in reality, Randy, this could have been a six-point swing. Right. Now we'll see. Good choice putting DeWitt Scott out there to shoot the technicals. The way he's shooting the ball right now, he's so comfortable. He's made four out of his last five from the field, and those two free throws didn't touch anything but the bottom of the net. And, Brian, we're talking about the Dons trying to get under nine at the four-minute mark. Under ten, excuse me. They've got it down to nine now with 544, and they have the ball. However, you got to hope that Quentin Carruthers isn't hurt because he's one of your best players. DeWitt Scott with the ball in the corner. Out to the wing to best. That gets got the ball again. I double screen for him right now. Savely out top. It's the ball knocked away. Chases it down and will reset the offense. Now he drives into the wing. Takes a step. Best with the rebound. Gotta shoot it. And will put it up. Contact ball. but no call. Now Burdeal <laughs> has it the other way. Behind the back. He will drive to the basket. Gets it knocked away but right to Mohamed Kone. And he's charged with an offensive foul. There's your man Randy. Justin Hawkins That's taking the charge. Two on the floor. And the thing that happened there with Kone, he looked down while he was dribbling the ball and he never saw Hawkins in front of him. Bring that lunch pal to work with you if you're Justin <laughs> Hawkins. IPFW basketball down by nine here. This could be quite a first half comeback. They've really started to settle down, figured out that full court press. Now they're making a game of it. Pompey on the wing. Again, you got to get the ball to Scott. He's your hot man right now. He's just standing in the corner. You got to set some picks for him. IPFW showing more patience on the offensive end than they were earlier in this game. Pompey into the paint. Back out to Savely. He'll drive all the way to the hoop, throws it up, and off the rim. Kone, Kone changed that yes, shot. Definitely adjusted that shot, and that was the difference. Miles drives, throws that one up. Yeah, Savely was bumping. will get a foul here. He was bumping him. On Savely. We'll see if that's a two-shot penalty or if it'll be... Yeah, it looks like it'll be take it out taken out of bounds. That was ruled a pass. Yeah, the so ball Savely was still on the foul. floor. They don't give the continuation in college like they do in the NBA. They give some, but they're not as generous with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mass it on six-team foul. In the NBA, they you have to be telepathic to be the ref because if they're even thinking about shooting, then they get free throws. There's that size advantage for Valparaiso again. Kone after a couple of shots, and that's one thing that Dons can't afford to have happen. That ball's going to get away and you slide out of bounds. You can't have silly bounds. turnovers like that either. Frustrating situation when you get it down to under 10 points. You have the ball. I mean, in reality, a three-pointer can make it a six-point game. Now it's back up to 11 in Valparaiso in control again. Well, yeah, because IPFW doesn't score. Then they gave up two or three offensive rebounds to give up a basket, and then you throw it away. Miles into the paint. We're going to get another foul. This time it'll be a shooting foul. Savely second. Kyle a little surprised by that call, but they're calling the body a little bit more here towards the end of the first half than they were early on. Well, it's not a shooting foul, but uh, the down's over the limit now. That's their seventh team foul, so it'll be a one-on-one -on -one for Miles. Jimmy Miles, though out of three from uh, the floor tonight, all three three-pointers. He does have a rebound and a couple of assists. And he makes the front end. Miles, a junior, averaged 8.3 points per game last season. In limited action, another one of those veterans on this Valparaiso team that makes them, well, they have to be the favorites in the mid-continent this season, just with all the talent we're seeing here tonight. And, of course, they're playing a Don's team that has zero seniors. Experience does make a difference. Miles gets the second half as well, 37-24. Full court pressure again, this time of the man-to-man -man variety. For the most part, we've seen that 2-2-1 full court pressure from Valparaiso, but now they go to the man-to-man. -man and Ron Howard called for fouling DeWitt Scott before the ball was inbounded. So now you give the guy who's the hottest guy on the Dons two free throws. Howard's third foul so far tonight. Yeah, Homer Drew not happy with that. 
Well, he's still out there as of now, as we see Sean Huff run to get checked in. And DeWitt Scott swishes another. He's up to 14 points. The only thing Scott hasn't done well tonight is shoot the three. Zero out of two from three-point land, coming off a four-for-four four performance beyond the arc. The Don's one out of five, 20% as a team. Shot eight for 15 at Southeast Missouri. Maybe Dane Fife is right that this they just don't shoot as well in this arena. They're shooting exactly 33% right now. Valpo, though, come on now, here's a team that doesn't play here at all. They're shooting 52%. DeWitt Scott with 15 points now, a 12-point Valpo advantage. Scott with 15 out of the Don's 26 points. Burdillo into the lane, can't get that one to fall. Hard rebound by Pompey, and he will drive it up himself. Got to push it now because Kone is back. Sabley with the open jumper, and that's what the Dons needed coming into this ballgame. Beat the Crusaders down the court. They did that time. It's back under 10 points. Yep. Dane Fife's hoping for that TV timeout now. Get a good chance to talk to him, but there's oh, Dan Oplin. What a great shot. A left-handed shot from Dan Oplin indeed. The six foot eight senior from St. Louis, Missouri has been a one man wrecking crew. 17 points already. We'll take a timeout. Valparaiso on top of this one by 11. This is Mastodon's basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, Stomp. Here at Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Brian Bowes alongside Randy Schiffman, the professor is what we're calling him tonight. We? Oui. You, like you Look at Kyle Savely. The Don's run the break. That's beautiful. Kone was back. The big guy's back. Push that ball up. That's your advantage as an offense. Savely stopping and popping from about 15. And maybe that'll get him going too because uh, he's been having a little trouble shooting it. He's two out of six. Dan Oplin at the line to complete the three-point play. That one out. The only trouble he's had tonight, Randy, is the free throw line. <laughs> Eight out of nine from the floor and zero for two from the line. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 17 points for the big fella. There's a reason he's a preseason all-conference pick. He's almost on his average already. 19 was his average last season. Of course, this is the first game of the year for Valpo. Tyler Bass will drive into the lane, backs down. Oplin then gives it up. Safely over to the wing. That one knocked. Out of bounds by Coke Good hands there by Coke Laser. Oh, Oplin coming out. Bit of a surprise there. Musa Mbai will check in for him. Alpo, a pretty deep bench from what we've seen so far. We've seen a nice rotation of nine, maybe ten players. I have to double check. And every one of them can press. Best with a nice wraparound. Gives it up. And that's going to be a foul there. Sort of a late whistle. Mbai. It's going to get called for that one. Jelko Edgerit. He went up, though. He, he was indecisive. A little about, tentative, it looked like at yeah. first he thought, well, I should lay it in. Then I know I should dunk it. One or the other. Well, and that's going to come with time for the sophomore, too. Yeah. He didn't play a lot last year. Not much at all. Of course, he's from Split, Croatia. Famous for basketball. Tony Kuko yeah. from there. Makes the first half. 39-28. A lot of good players on top. from, uh, from that Quite area. Quite a few. And it just keeps growing over there, doesn't it? Overseas player infiltrating the NBA and very successful. Makes them both. A lot in college now, too. Uh, we're talking about it the other night when uh, IU opened the season against Nickel State. Four Australian players. Another travel call. Wait, Belpo must be in a hurry to get out of here. The suitcases are packed. <laughs> They're traveling all over. Uh, that is turnover number seven now against Valparaiso compared to IPFW's 11. It's really a lot for both teams. Yeah, so far. 
Most of the downs came early, though. Remember, they had seven in about five minutes. Pompey so. puts the brakes on, hits that one from the free throw line. That, that gets the crowd going. It's down to a seven-point Valpo lead. Hasn't been this close in over ten minutes. Scott with the steal, but he can't save it to his own team. Did the right thing, though. He threw it back towards uh, the other basket. You don't want to save it and throw it underneath where the other team can score. Kone muscles his way in, can't get it to fall again. Right now he's helping the Don. Safely with the drive, crossover, draws contact, can't get it to call, can't get it to fall. Knew exactly what he was doing though. Gotta like that. He knew exactly what he was doing. I love his game, Brian. He comes in off the bench, and I asked Dane Fife this uh, yesterday. I said, you know, you're thinking maybe you're starting him to get a little more offense? He goes, no, I really like what he brings into the game. He brings in the enthusiasm, and he really brings a spark onto that team every time he's out there. And sometimes it's better to have that off the bench. I like a uh, Vinny Johnson I when he played for the Pistons the a while ago, the micro, the micro. A lot of but Ben Gordon did like for that. the Bulls last year. A lot of coaches do like that, where they have someone with a lot of, uh, well, the spunk. Let's call it spunk. Right. Let's call it offensive prowess, defensive energy. That seems to be what Savely has done here tonight and is going to bring to this team this season. And the coaches will always tell you, it's not who starts the game, it's who finishes. Those are the four, those are the five best players. Uh, he makes both. Now a five-point Valparaiso lead. IPFW once down by 15 in this game. After three games, one thing definitely noticeable about IPFW this year, no quit at all on this team. Been down a lot in the two home games and just keep coming back, coming back, plugging away. Brandon McPherson has checked in for Valparaiso. He gives it off to Sean Huff. They work it inside to Embot. He's against Edgerick. Can't get it to fall. Edgerick with a rebound. IPFW with momentum. Savely spots up. Can't get the three oh, to best, fall, but best rebound. is there. You know, Best played a little point guard in his younger days, and it's 6'9", 240. He looks like he still wants to. That's impressive. Savely into the lane. Gives it up to Scott. No room there. And Scott hasn't taken a shot for a while. Best into the lane. With the left hand, gets it to fall. Here comes the Dons, 39-36. Tell you what, it's not only the comeback that's impressive right now, Brian. It's the fact that the Dons have 36 points in the first half. And the crowd getting into the game now, too. Valparaiso with five subs on the court right now. No starters. McPherson with the spin move. He'll reset. Embi can't control it, then gets his mitts on it. Almost a steal for Edgerich. That should have been a double, a double dribble, dribble, dribble there. Not called. Cole Klaeser will pick it up. Looks for the three. Now dishes inside. That one just off the mark. And here comes IPFW. A three-pointer will tie it. Pompey's going to try it way off. Ah. Got you know away what? from what had been working. At that point, he might have wanted to take it strong to the hole. IPFW just got away from what had been working. Setting up the offense, taking your time. Q is and going to be a travel. Quentin Carruthers headed to the locker room early, and he is limping badly on that right leg. The way uh, he's walking, I'm no doctor, I ain't good, but I play one on TV. <laughs> now, um, it looked like it was his knee that was stiff because his leg didn't seem to be bending. That's why I don't think it was his ankle. I do consults on Wednesdays at uh, Parkview, by the way. Thanks so much. I'll keep that in mind. Best drives into the lane, and it's going to be an offensive foul. I think they're going to call the screen away from Z. the ball. Yep. Good call, Randy. It appears as if Jelko Edgeridge is going to get the foul away from the ball. And now with 30 seconds to go in the first half, Valpo, you got to figure is going to hold for one. Now, I'm surprised with that being away from the ball, I would think they would shoot free throws. But Valparaiso gets the ball. Here, interesting. McPherson to Cole Klaeser. Valpo works it around. Uh, they're waiting to start running the offense in about three seconds here. Don's still going man to man here. Less than eight. Holding for the final shot. Shuff will, Huff will fire up the three. That one off the mark. Just Rebounded throw it up. by Bass. Oh, and he's going to no. Oh, uh, he wanted to call it, Randy. Can't call he had the hand on that. up. Thought about it. No, he was yeah. clearly calling <laughs> halftime. That's the right call. <laughs> it was close, that's for sure. And I'll, try, I'll credit tr Tyler Best for at least trying that one. <laughs> at 39-36, our halftime score. Valparaiso on top. We'll take a break and be back with our halftime festivities. You're listening to IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Everything you need, paper, pencils. 
We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stop. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait. What is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? <gasps> Allium sepa? Can we eat it? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. With me right now is, thank you, Brian. With me right now, Chris Paul, assistant basketball coach for the women here at IPFW. You guys have only played one, I should say you gals, you've only yes. played one game so far. Is that a little bit of a, an odd start, playing one game only this late? Well, we had two exhibitions, so we got off to a pretty good start and played well in those exhibitions. Then we went out and had a really tough game at Bowling Green. You know, defending MAC champs on the road. Unfortunately, they unveiled their flag for the MAC championship, and um, we played solid for about 30 minutes and fell asleep for about 10 more. And you just can't do that with a championship caliber team. Now, to answer your question about the schedule, normally we would pick a game up right in here. But for some reason, I mean, you know, being an independent and not being in a conference, sometimes we got to take what other teams give us. So we've had this week off, and we'll prepare for Central Michigan on Saturday. And we've talked a lot about it in the men's games, that there are a lot of international players in the men, a couple, three out here tonight for each team. Now I see it's happening for the women, too. You have, what, three international players on the team? Yeah, we have three. We have Pavla Pletkova who's from the Czech Republic. We have Tina Moen, who's from Norway. And we have Julianne Hone, who's from Germany. And one of the reasons that we did it is, once again, because we're not in a conference, uh, we have to go try to find some size any way we can. And the beautiful thing about international students is they don't know the difference between IPFW or UCLA or Notre Dame. When they come here, they, don't, they just want to play basketball in the States and want to play Division I basketball. So um, our Bruce Paris has done a great job making contacts over there, and it's just continuing to flow. We just recently signed another one from Belgium for the fall next year. And didn't Tina play overseas this summer for a national team? Tina plays for the Norwegian national team. And the young lady that we signed for the fall next year actually plays for the Belgium national team. 
So they've got a lot of international experience. The only problem is, is when they come out here for the states, the rules are different. Right, right. You know, they step in the lane too early. They don't realize that they got to go down to the X to check in. Um, they've never heard of one and one. Wow. So we got to teach them those kind of things. But as the season goes on, they're going to pick things up. I know you lost a couple of good players from last year, but you have a lot of players coming back, and experience is always a wonderful thing as a coach. It is. We do have a lot of people coming back, but we do have seven newcomers. So we are bigger and stronger and more experienced, but it's going to take some time to add the seven new to the eight returnings. Um, we felt like we did a lot of nice things at Bowling Green. We're going to take what we did well, hopefully forget about the things we didn't do well and improve on it, and get ready for Central Michigan on Saturday. What are the toughest things about working the new people in, especially when you're playing so few games early on? Well, the toughest thing is consistency. Um, you know, we, we've got 12 people. That, I was talking to one of our players today. Depth is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because you can have people, if somebody gets hurt, you can put somebody in. The bad thing about it is we've got six or seven people sitting on the sideline who could get on the floor and contribute, but we can't play 15 players in a game. So we're trying to figure out who the ones are that we're going to go to and try to get some consistency that way. I know last year you experimented with a different style with the playing players for about 90 seconds going full blast, back and forth, back and forth. I know it didn't last too long. Is it, is it back to just, you know, we're playing more of a, yes, some up-tempo, but not full blast all the time? Yes, we're back to traditional basketball. Our, our goal is every time down, and we tell them every day in practice, to value each possession on offense, take care of the basketball, and be very solid on the defensive end. Um, and we feel like we can do that this year because we have more size. Last year, there are a lot of times we had to start four kids 5'9 or smaller. And that would have been <laughs> tough in the SAC. So, uh, but this year, we can start 6'3, 6'5 in the lineup at the same time, and we can get back to regular basketball. And you can't teach tall. I, I just love saying that. You can't teach tall. You can't teach size. Next game coming up, Central Michigan, the Lady Chippewas. What do you expect from them? Uh, we, expe we expect a very good basketball team. They're picked. Now, this never means anything, but they're, but they're picked towards the bottom of the MAC, but that's just because of what happened last year. They brought in some good newcomers. They were already 2-0 and with a real good win at Illinois Chicago last night, and they're going to have a lot of confidence. So we got to be, we got to come in there ready to play and do the things that we talked about earlier, and, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll take care of business. And give us a coach's uh, viewpoint on the first half there. I thought as far as the IPFW fell behind, Great, great effort by them to cut it down to three at the half. Yeah, well, well, what I've seen, and I've spent a lot of time passing Dane in the hallway, what I know about him is he's, he's a fighter. I mean, everybody knows this. He's not going to quit. So when they were down 15, I knew that there was a lot of time, and they're going to defend. I spent a lot of time talking with Coach Jasek earlier today, and what he talked about was he was impressed with how well they defended at SEMO. And, it, you know, Valpo was making shots early. As soon as they went cold, IPFW stepped up, and I wouldn't be shocked at all to see us take, take control early in the second half. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. Look forward to seeing some ball games this year, and uh, hopefully it'll be a good season. Yeah, we're, look, we're really looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. All right. Let's go back to Brian Bowes That's, uh, for more of the Centennial Halftime Wireless Report. Brian? All right. Thanks so much, Randy. Back here at Memorial. Coliseum, a 39-36 Valparaiso lead at halftime. We'll have more of the Centennial Wireless Halftime Report coming up right after this. This is Mastodon's Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp.
do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Coliseum, IPFW trails Valparaiso 39 to 36 at halftime. And when you think about it, Randy, so Shockey, 27 to 10. Valparaiso had a lead in this game at one time, not any longer. Yeah, with only about nine minutes to go in the first half, and the Dons only had 10 points at that point, scored 26 over the final few minutes, and really made a nice run. And they're shooting the ball a little better. 38% right now. And I know that doesn't sound great, but they were under 30% for uh, a lot of the game early and shot only 31% or 32% in a loss here on Saturday. Well, it really seemed like shot, shot, shot selection was the key for IPFW as well. A lot of three-pointers early, a lot of missed shots inside, and now it's a situation where it's, they've, they've changed. They've taken some more time on offense, and you can tell in the stats it's really made a difference. You say shot selection, I say Scott selection, as in DeWitt <laughs> Scott, who scored 15 points. And he hit uh, four out of his last five. He's really gotten them back in the game. As you can see, uh, Valpo was shooting over 60% down. Assist, Dons need to pick that up a little. Rebounds even. Free throws, Dons dominating at the free throw line. Too many turnovers, though, for both teams, really. Well, you also look at both stats, too. 37% for IPFW compared to they were shooting 22% at one point. Well, we'll take another break and be back with more of the Centennial Wireless Halftime Show. You're watching... Mastodon's basketball in UPN, Fort Wayne. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Here at the Coliseum for the second half, IPFW with possession to start things. They trail Valparaiso 
39-36. An interesting starter for the second half. Kyle Savely in there, Randy. No sign of Quentin Carruthers, who left in the first half with an injury. Yeah, he hobbled uh, to the locker room before it was halftime, and it looked like it was his right knee. Inside, Tyler Best gets the Dons on the board quickly. A one-point game. Great move by Best there because he used the little head and shoulders fake, sort of like the Larry Bird kind of move, and he got Kone just to jump a little, and that's the only, uh, that's all he needed, that little window of opportunity to make the layup, and it's down to one. Boy, it hasn't been this close since the beginning of the game. Best with the intercepted pass there, and we're going to get a foul on Kone again. That'll be his second personal foul. Well, he's had a few turnovers in the first half, and right there, great defensive play by Tyler Best, and Kone got a piece of him. Well, I thought that was Kone's third, but... That would have made a big, big difference in this ball game if he had picked up his third that early. Don's have to be a little more aggressive coming to the ball when you against the break, Brian. It's like being a receiver in football. You know, you gotta come to you gotta come to the ball. You can't wait till it gets to you. That one lost underneath by Oplin. About the only mistake he's made all night. I think W with an opportunity to take the lead here, Rand. I think Oplin, who sat quite a bit in the first half, is going to log a lot of minutes in the second half. He had 17 points, 8 out of 9 shooting. Wide open underneath. Scott couldn't handle it. Pompey into the lane. That one leaves it short. Gets his own rebound, though. And the Dons will reset things. You know, this is huge for IPFW right now, Brian, because Valpo's been in the lead almost the entire game. Savely drives right side. Now back towards the top of the key. Fights off that screen and gets that one to fall. IPFW grabs the lead, 40 to 39. And that was terrible defense. The defender was playing defense with his hands, not with his feet. Your hands don't get in front of a person, your body does. Good double team by Savely. But they're gonna call him for whacking on the arm. We'll see if it's Savely or Hawkins on the call. You notice how they immediately double teamed Oplin that time. They don't want to give him the open looks like he had in the first half. You need help against a player like that. Nobody's guarding him one-on-one -on -one out here. Safely's third foul. Team's first this half. Appraisal back into Oplin. Their bread and butter. The jump hook just off. Pompey with the rebound. I feel like, you know, beep, 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 beep. News flash. Oplin missed a shot. <laughs> just his second miss tonight. Eight of ten from the field. And that's that little jump hook that he was so successful on. Hit two or three of those in the first half. That's with a dribble drive. Pump fakes, then takes an extra step and can't get it to fall. Gets oh! An elbow from Kone. That was not intentional. Not intentional at all. Best but was that's got a sting. Him. It'll leave a mark. Howard on the right side. We're going to get an illegal screen. Appears to be on Kone once that's again. That's his third. You know, I don't, two against Mohamed Kone. I hate to disagree with my partner, but I don't think Best took a step there. I think he took three, <laughs> and they didn't call it. All right, two extra steps. How does that sound? <laughs> or at least one extra one. Don's in front by one, 40 to 39. If you were watching early and you said, oh, no, they're getting blown out. They're down 17. I'm turning it off. Well, welcome back. Best inside. He's been their go-to guy so far in the second half. Backs in Kone with three fouls, taking a lot of body. Kone gets a piece of it and then knocks it off best foot. I don't know how they don't call a foul there with the body. Either let them play or don't let them play, Randy. Well, That's my philosophy. Kone was backing off. I was surprised they didn't call three seconds on best. Mastodons by one. Valparaiso with the ball. At one point, the Crusaders had a 17-point lead. Lloyd inside to Oplin, the defensor, defender there. And it looked like DeWitt Scott. That was not a very good pass. Hawkins should have intercepted it and thought he was going to. He just mistimed his jump. It is going to get, go against Scott. The, the one second. thing I didn't like uh, on the last offensive possession, oh, there's Kone with an easy dunk over Best. That was Best didn't know where the ball was. Man and ball. You always have to know man and ball on defense. But Best that time, you know, he just kept backing him in, backing him in. Didn't run the offense because he was trying to draw a foul on him. Great pass by Best, though. He makes up for it, gets it back to Hawkins. But you know what I mean, Brian? Sometimes you'll be so focused on getting a guy that fourth or fifth foul that you're not playing right. your game, and you're playing it to their hands at that point. Trying to work the foul too much. IPFW drawing the foul here. And we'll have our first substitution of the second half. Jelko Edgerich will check in for the Mastodons. So look at Hawkins' right eye. Now you get a good view of it. Sean Huff will come in for Valparaiso. See the shiner there? Not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this could be seesaw the rest of the way. Remember, these teams played a two-point game at Valpo last year, and the Dons 
one of the best players ever to play at IPFW, David Simon, tipped one in right at the buzzer, and it was disputed, and the refs finally decided no good, and the Downs lost it by two. Hoplin with a lefty hook, hits nothing but air, but Jimmy Miles there for the putback. Falco back out on top by a point. And you really can't blame the Downs for not getting that rebound because when a guy like Oplin or anybody shoots the ball from four feet, you expect it to hit the rim. IPFW reset. Savely decides to fire one up. Just shy. Oplin with the rebound, and here comes Valparaiso. Ron Howard to the hoop. He will draw the foul. Can't get the bucket to fall, and he's not happy about that. And speaking of falling, Hawkins on the floor again. Charged with a... Blocking foul. Blocking foul. On the shot, two shots for Ron Howard. Great play by Oplin right there. Snatched the rebound, immediately looked up court and got the ball to Howard. That's picture perfect fast break hoops. Hawkins with three fouls now. He joins DeWitt Scott. And again, the Don's down a player because Quentin Carruthers, one of their starters, arguably the best player on the team in the locker room. There you see Hawkins. Just sort of leaning the body in there, trying to draw the That's foul because, because uh, Howard definitely shifted and was going the other way. Kyle Savely, the other down with three fouls. Kone, the only Crusader in foul trouble. He has three. Ooh, I don't know about that call right there, Brian. Savely looked like he was slipping, but they're going to call the foul on number 30, Ron Howard. With the body. Well, they ended up charging it to Jared Lloyd. Oh, Randy, Howard, his Howard second. Was that would have like been was Howard's fourth. Howard was running like they called it on him. Very close. My faux pas. <laughs> it's okay. They didn't know I, I didn't know the was French. 45-42. It's actually Russian. <laughs> Here come the Dons. Pompey. No call there. You got to call it one way or the other. He's on the floor. Gives it up to Hawkins. IPFW has numbers now. Edgerick ahead to DeWitt Scott. And the Dons will steal a basket there. And that was a great pass by Edgerick. He was looking forward the whole time. And Scott, the hot man, has got 17 now. And Huff. He huffed and puffed, but he blew that one out of bounds. Ball to the Dons. Well, great break there by IPFW. And that's going to get the youngster some... Some credit, too. You have to give him some credit, and it's going to give him some confidence when he can make a pass like that, and it's a very successful thing. Edgerich, well, he's going to learn as he goes, and that's just a nice start of his process. He's got some size. you got to get him out there. Scott, boy, does he want to take the shot. I don't blame him. That looked good. Hawkins hustles to get the rebound. Dishes to Pompey, who gets the jumper. IPFW back on top by a point. Back on the teeter-totter, baby. Now Valparaiso will try to recapture this seesaw second half affair. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Miles inside to Oplin. The jump hook rolls the soft rims tonight, helping him out. Come on, he you knew he wasn't going to miss three of one. He wasn't going to miss three of those in a row. Hand off of him. Tell you what, they are a little physical on the e. wide open three for Pompey just off the back iron. Worked ahead to Jimmy Miles now. No bothering to set up the offense. He fires the shot. Off Oplin, out of bounds. We'll take a timeout. 47-46. Valparaiso in charge of a tight one here tonight at the Coliseum. You're watching Don's Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. I made you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp.
IPFW with the basketball. Working it ahead to DeWitt Scott. He'll take the jumper. He's been the hot hand off this time. Rebounded by Howard. Here comes Valparaiso on the run. The pass Whoops. just kicked away by Justin Hawkins. IPFW back the other way. Scott with it again. Wouldn't surprise me to see him shoot the way he's been shooting. Good idea there to pull it out, though, because he's missed a couple in a row. He didn't really have the advantage taking the ball to the basket. That's a smart play. Save right inside. Pass. Misses ah. the pass to Edrick. Picked off, picked, picked off by Kone. Ken Jelko's got to go after that ball aggressively. He just can't sit back and wait for it. Cole Clazier from the corner. That one off the mark. Back outside. Howard will hold it. Now he'll take the shot. That one's short. Rebounded by Huff inside. And they will count the basket. Boy, Huff just boxed out Scott on that play. He was the only one, unless that thing hit the hit the uh, rim so hard that just went flying back. Nobody but Huff was getting that rebound. Pompey charged with the foul, and you, like you said, Randy, you have to credit Sean Huff with just a great job of fundamental basketball there. That's the only reason he got that rebound, and that's the only reason he's at the free throw line right now. And of course, Coach Fife would argue that fundamentally the Dons did something wrong there because you're not supposed to let the man get inside of you and get positioned like that. Belpo retains possession. Now it's knocked away. Two on one. Okay, picked up by Scott. He's got Savely ahead to the rim. Contact, but no foul, and Dane Fife's irate. Back comes Valparaiso. Cole Clazier on the corner. Verdeel drives. That one knocked away. Saved Great to Justin play. Hawkins. Oh, what an unbelievable play by Pompey. Savely was trying to force the contact on that other one and didn't get the call. Just tried it again and didn't get call. And I thought Dane Fife was going to get his first tee as a coach. He was not happy, that's for sure. Now Valparaiso will take their time with the ball. They lead by three early on here in the second half. Quite a ball game so far. Kone works it inside. Easy shot. Uh, he can't give him a one-footer. He's not going to miss too many of those. Eld Edrich did not stand his ground that time. And the lead up to five now for the Crusaders. Press didn't cause a turnover out. there, but awfully close. I think we're going to see Best come back in for Edgerich right now. Best was playing very well before he went out for a quick rest. He's got six points on the night. They only have him for one assist. I thought he had a couple more. I'm a little more generous with the passing assist <laughs> totals because uh, I never got many. <laughs> DJ Posley also in the game for IPFW. Pompey brings it right side. He'll draw the contact. You know, an interesting thing I was looking at, Randy, and we know Quint Carruthers injured himself in the first half of this game. Coming into this game, or in, and actually in the last game against Southeast Missouri State, the starters for IPFW averaged 35 minutes. That's and a if lot. If it wasn't for Carruthers being hurt, they'd be averaging on pace to average that again tonight. Best with the inside move. Gets the left-hander to fall. Back down to a three-point deficit for the Dons. That's a couple of times he's gone offhand. And look at DeWitt Scott with the good hustle. Sitting on Homer Drew's lap right there. Hello, Homer. And you know what Homer said when that happened? Uh, don't do it. No. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're taking my Simpsons lines. Come on. <laughs> Cowbunga, man. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Randy. <laughs> I'm at Relax, a loss Bart. for words. Well, not on that one. Blocked away. Best with the rebound. The rim blocked that one. Yeah. Scott's going to shoot this. See with Scott's spin move. Nothing there. Gives it back. The drive. Best will take the three. He's got it in his sights, but off the rim. And we'll see who this foul is on. I'll tell you what. That was a great play by DJ Posley to just slither inside there. The skinny guy going inside the couple of beefy guys and getting the rebound and keeping it alive for the Dons. Opland with the foul. That'll be his third. Five on each team right now. So uh, with almost 13 minutes remaining in the second half, both teams getting close to bonus time. And the Dons really shot the ball well from the line in the first half. 11 out of 13. One of the reasons they got back in the ball game. And I think Kone is bleeding. So he's got to come out of the game. Sean Huff will come back into the game for Valparaiso. Yeah, he's got a little cut on his hand because the doctor in front of us, the trainer, is putting on the gloves. That's the rule now. You know, a lot of people call it the Magic Johnson rule. Anytime there's blood on the court, on a player, has to come out of the game. Pompey with it. Gives it up to Scott. He'll drive baseline. The reverse gets it to go. And the foul. And that was Perfect textbook basketball, Brian. He drove the baseline, and he used the rim to shield the defender. There's no way that shot can be blocked. 
the defender would have to stick his hand through the net, and that would have been goaltending. We're hopefully going to get a look at that. Look at Scott. See how he uses his body and uses the rim to shield the defender? That is absolutely textbook, and I'm glad we just didn't get a shot at it. Scott pulling his shorts down to uh, adjust the jersey. It was the jersey he was adjusting. <laughs> DeWitt with 19 points. Make it 20, and we're tied once again, 51 all. And that's back-to-back 20-point -back games for DeWitt Scott. Not a bad start to the career. He is establishing himself, that's for sure. Velpo with the ball now, working it inside. Huff back to Oplin. He'll fire up a three off the back iron and rebounded by Posley. Posley, Posley will Johnny take his time, again. now give it up. The shot from Pompey off the back iron to Scott. Pompey looked like he was going to pass it to Bess, and then he couldn't decide, and then he decided to shoot, and then he couldn't decide if he wanted to use the backboard. So a little too much indecisiveness there. 25 on the shot clock, plenty of time. Best drives in, backs down, and they're called travel this time. Yeah, he slid the pivot foot. Move that pivot foot, that's for sure. 51-51 our score. And I don't think Coach Fife likes seeing Best go one-on-one -on -one there. IPFW once trailed this game by 17 points. Ron Howard to the hoop. The one-hander can't go. Tries to get his rebound, but again, IPFW, great job on the defensive boards. Hawkins comes out with it, ahead to Scott, throws it up, and there's going to be a blocking foul here. And Scott will be going back to the line for two more shots, and this could put IPFW in the lead. 51-51 our score. The Dons will be at the free throw line when we come back. You're watching Macedon Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait. What is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? <gasps> Allium Sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. With Scott taking it strong to the hole again, Brian. Not making the shot, but you notice there he didn't look to get fouled. He looked to make the shot, and he drew the foul. And that's, it may sound like semantics, but that's a big difference, getting fouled and looking to get fouled. He was looking to make the shot there. Hits his first free throw, 7 out of 7 from the stripe tonight. Make it 8 out of 8 downs, 14 out of 16. Coach has got to love that. They're up by 2. 22 points for DeWitt Scott tonight. 53-51, Don's just under 12 minutes to go. Valparaiso trying to figure out a way to well, take care of the Don's. They did so very well at the beginning of this game, and things have kind of fallen apart. Turnovers have been a problem. Oplin inside, can't get that one to go. There's Scott with the rebound. And again, with just about nine minutes to go in the first half, the Don's were down 17. So in the last 20 minutes, the Dons have outscored Valpo by 19 points. That's incredible. Pompey out top, high post. To Justin Hawkins, back to Pompey. Dons will reset it. Amazing That's thing to me is how much Opland has cooled off for Valpo after a great, great, great first half. Best backs down Kone, nothing there. Someone's got to be open it away. With Hawkins team. hustles in, gets that ball. Plenty of time. Under 10 on the shot clock. Pompey for three, can't get it to fall. Ron Howard just fell into Coach Fife. Posing players falling into the coaches. Cole Klaser with 11. the ball on the other end. 
Hoplin taking a peek. Here's Berdiel. Nice spin move. Can't get that one to fall. Kind of like the first half, Randy. IPFW couldn't get anything right. to fall. Now Velpo can. Posley the other way. Gets it in there. Mastodons by four. 55-51, their largest lead of this game. What I really like, Brian, is that the outside shot's not working that great for IPFW, and they are attacking the rim, attacking the rim, attacking the rim. Now the crowd starts to get into it here. And we'll get a foul away from the ball. Just getting into the pre-holiday spirit. You know, I, I, I don't have the Thanksgiving bug yet, and I love Thanksgiving. It is far and away my favorite holiday of the year, and I'm not kidding you about that. I love Thanksgiving. I love the sounds. I love the smells. I love the sights. It's truly my favorite holiday oh, of the year. I like the smells year. and the sights of turkey and There's mashed potatoes like on my plate. Turkey in the oven. Belpo will inbounds. Hoplin with it. They trail by four. He challenges Hawkins. No movement there. Lloyd looks inside. Hawkins Look at Hawkins it away. With quick hand. But right to Howard, and we're going to get a foul here on Best. The dance just really going strong to the hole tonight, and that's the best thing about their offense right now. When you don't have good shooters, you got to take shorter shots like this one. Watch as they get the ball inside. Well, this is Hawkins knocking the ball away. That's some pretty good defense, too. Though the Dons got uh, called for a foul a couple of seconds later, and now it's Opie at the line. Ron Howard <laughs> is going to shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to find him after the game and tell him what you've been saying. I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> there, Brian. It's on tape, Randy. There's a tape of this. I'm, I'm pretending like I'm in Congress when they say these things and it's being taped <laughs> and then they say they never said it and you show them the tape and they still say they didn't say it. <laughs> hey, if they can do uh, it, I can do it. Shiftman for Congress. I can just see it. Aren't we supposed to look up to our leaders? I think so. <laughs> and I am shorter than you, so I I'm just emulating the leaders. 55-52 our score. Having some fun tonight here at the Coliseum. That one's going to be a blocking foul. And Pompeo go to line to shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. Both teams in the single bonus right now. They're quickly approaching double bonus time with 10 minutes to go in the game. 9.57 for you exactos out there. I'm a rounder offer. You a rounder offer or an exacto? I, I don't know. It so you did a lot of stands. baseball. And they get into the minutia there. Yeah. The minutia. Oh, my goodness. It's a real word. Hey, I paid for that education. I get to use it <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Up and in for Pompey. 56-52 our score. How about 88% from the line for the Dons tonight? And this is a team that has struggled from the line the last few years. Here we got a little replay action on the block there. Good call by the official. They've made some good ones tonight. They've made some bad ones. The Dons were benefits of a bad call that we thought in the first half. The play where Quentin Crothers got hurt, they called an intentional flagrant foul, and it really looked like the guy was going for the ball, and it was just contact. Valparaiso trails this by five in their season opener. Biggest lead for the Dons. Oplin with the right hand hook this time. Can't get that to fall. And if you just tuned in, Oplin is a lefty. So that's a little tougher than it looks for him. So he looked pretty good with it. Boy, are they bodying up on the defense. And the fans behind us are noticing that. By the way, you notice who's sitting right behind us? No, I didn't notice that. Matt Nover, former Indiana star, who also uh, was in the movie Blue Chips who now runs a basketball school at Spice Fieldhouse. We're going to have him on halftime for one of the games, and he's going to explain. He works with kids a lot. He's a good teacher. He actually showed me how to shoot the ball. That couldn't have been easy. Hey. <laughs> I get my own, too, once in a while. Yeah. Lloyd spots up. Three ball. Count it. Back the other way, Valparaiso now pulls to within two. But neither team shooting the uh, three well tonight. Downs one out of 12. Valpo now two out of 13 after that one, and that's a silly turnover for IPFW. Turnover number 14 against IPFW. Most of those coming early on in the first half. If you're just joining us, this was a 17-point game. Valparaiso leading 27 to 10 early on, and IPFW has really stifled this Valparaiso team since and caught a few breaks with some missed shots, let's be honest. No, but they're taking the ball inside, and they're taking better shots now, Brian. The Dons are shooting 36%. Not great, not horrible. Valpo down to 42 after shooting 60% earlier. And you mentioned turnovers. Downs with 14, but seven were in the first five minutes. Right. So really, since then, they've protected the ball pretty well. That's going to be a foul screen. on Oplin. Is that four on Oplin? That should be foul number four on Oplin. And that's huge. He's their leading scorer. Average is 19 a game. He has 19 right now. Eight and a half minutes to play. Did you see just waved off Coach Drew? 
Drew said, hey, I'm going to take you on. He said, no, I'm fine. I won't get the fifth. Well, they might be going, waiting for the TV timeout that's going to come uh, after the next 30 seconds of play, the first dead ball. So he might be hoping for that. 57-55 our score. And sometimes the coach will trust an experienced player that he'll know how to play, you know, without picking up that foul. Hawkins gives up to Best, and he bounces it off his knee out of bounds. And well, those are the problems that IPFW had earlier. That's a bad turnover. And most of the turnovers early came against the full court press. That is just a bad turnover. If you have to, just hold on to the ball and then call a timeout. Back the other way now. Hopland at the top of the key. Fakes the three. He drives and will get the left-hander to bounce through. We're tied once again, 57 apiece. You so notice the determination on that shot. He knows his play may be limited for the rest of the night because of the four fouls, and he's going to make sure he takes care of every opportunity he gets. Bad pass there by Savely. Hoplin picks that one off. Howard will drive down the middle. The underhand scoop gets it to fall, and one. Valparaiso back on top. Yeah, that's a 7 nothing run right now. The Dons are up 57-50. Justin Hawkins called for the foul on that one, Randy. Valparaiso leads at 59-57. Time for a TV timeout. You're watching Don's Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at $2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, Stomp. Here at the Coliseum, Valparaiso back on top, 59-57, a 7-0 run, and Ron Howard trying to make it an 8-0 run with the back end of this foul in a basket. And the big reason behind that run, Brian, besides Valpo hitting some shots, the Dons have turned it over the last three times down the floor. Valparaiso keeps possession, Lloyd buries the triple, here comes Valparaiso, what a quick turnaround. And there's another one where you got to box out, you got to know where your man is on the free throw line. 62-57 now, Valparaiso is on top, a 10 to nothing run. Scott will try to change that, drives inside, fires that one up, off. Thought he got fouled on that one, the refs didn't call it. Back comes Valparaiso, the oop to Kone, he saves it, out to Howard. Good steal by there, Posley. Posley will take it. Gives it up to Pompey. He fires the three. Gets that one to fall. 62-60. You know, so I just that breaks the 10-0 run. A couple of minutes ago, how badly both teams were shooting at three. Don's now hit one, and Belpo's hit its last two. Homer Drew has seen enough. It's a 62-60 game. We'll take another break. You're watching IPFW Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? 
The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Back to action here at the Coliseum. Valparaiso with a missed shot out of the timeout. IPFW with possession now. Pompey with the ball on the wing. Dribble, dribbles towards the top. Hedrick's got the away game. with it. a little illegal pick there. He sort of just stuck the hip out as the guy went by. The shot from the wing. Wow, what a play <laughs> there by DJ Posey. That's a that's a no, no, no. Great shot by the, that the coach has. Hawkins with the big block. Back come the Don. 62-62 our score. Posley will dribble in, thinks about it, then dishes off. IPFW will set up the offense. Good play by the freshman who just made yep. the tough shot, but smart enough to know that prayers don't always get answered back to back. Pompey drives, changes direction, gives it up to Hawkins. That one knocked away, but Posley ten on the shot to keep clock. Control. Pompey from way downtown, off the front of the rim. Edgerick will pick up the rebound and take it out. IPFW sets it up again. 5.41 to play. And another good idea there because Edrich wasn't going to shoot that ball over Conan. 62-62 our score. Pompey again puts the brakes on, fires it up off the iron. Too much one-on-one -on -one right now by yep. the Downs, Brian. Shake Way too much one-on-one. -on -one. I agree. He never looked to pass the ball. Howard brings it down and Homer will call a timeout. 30 second timeout so we'll stay with you here on the UPN Fort Wayne IPFW basketball 62. -0. This has turned into a great ball game and I always like to remind people at a juncture like this, come on out and see one of these games. People who don't think that these are good games, you're out of your minds. This is Division I basketball and these are the kind of teams you see in the NCAA tournament. Look at the steal now, watch this. Uh, they get it over the corner. Here comes the three-pointer by Pompey. Pompey, the beautiful release on that shot. Beautiful. And he knew, again, before he got to the three-point line, he knew what he was going to do. When he hit half court, he right. had a plan. There was one guy back. Good shot. That's been the key for IPFW tonight, though, Randy, is the fact that from their defense, they've created offense. And it was a perfect example there. Pompey with his 11th point of the night. Two and the downs and double figures. The spark yeah, plug real making. Spark Cass Avely. Valpo with possession, 62 all. Hopman Under back six in for the Crusaders. To inside to Kone. Back to the inside game. He can't get that one to fall. Fight for the rebound. And I think he dribbled it out of bounds. Right. That was Jimmy Miles. Bounds. Got inside but couldn't control it. And looks like Tyler Best coming right back in for Hawkins. Justin Good Hawkins idea, is going to get a break. I think. Yep. Because you're close to the TV timeout. You sit him down now. He actually is going to get about an extra two, three minutes of rest. That's good coaching for 26-year-old. <laughs> Still amazes me that he's only 26 because you never get that sense when you're with Coach Fife. Safely with it on the way. IPFW 21 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Safely picks up his dribble, gives it up to Best, then cuts. Best will take the shot off the iron. Those rims not as friendly as they were for either team in the first half. Z fighting Kone for that rebound. Good hand by Zelko right there to knock it away. Here comes Savely, one on three. What's he going to do? He will pull it out. Edgerick with it on the wing. Back to Best. I thought he was going to fire the three there. Kone came out on him, though. Good defensive play by Val. He'll give it up to Pompey. Right now, Pompey, Savely, Best, Scott, and Edgerick on the floor for IPFW. Ten on the shot clock. Downs have to do something here. I'd get the ball Best to do it, Scott. Drive, spins, throws this one up off the high glass. No contact with the rim. Yep. And Valparaiso will take over. Here comes Lloyd. He does the pump fake. Gives it up to Jimmy Miles for the basket. That's yeah, a perfect fast Woo. break there. Three on one. Nothing Scott could do. But right back comes Savely. 64-62. Valparaiso on top. Now, Kone's got the three fouls. Doesn't matter so much now. If under four minutes to go. Howard will check back in as he makes his way to the... 
Scott cooling off a little right now. Elpo back on the attack here, 64-62. Don's looking forward to that TV timeout because they could uh, use a little regroup here. Jimmy Miles for three, in and out. That one rebounded by Kone, though. Fights off Edgerich and Best for the rebound. Thought they were going to get Kone over the back. Guy being tough. The foul on Best that time. We'll take another timeout. Good one here tonight. Valparaiso leads it 64-62. This is Don's basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Randy, you talk, Randy, you talked about it earlier tonight when you mentioned Valparaiso's victory last year in that uh, very close game Two at point. Valparaiso. Well, we might be in line for the same thing tonight. Two-point game. Gotta love a close game unless you're coaching. <laughs> or you're in Vegas. Mohamed Kone at the line for Valparaiso, shooting a pair, misses the first one. 332 to play. Valparaiso by a deuce. Free throw line's been the key tonight, Brian. Valpo 5 out of 11 from the line, the Dons 16 out of 18. Not only shooting a much better percentage, but getting many more opportunities at the line. Kone does get that one to fall. And Three next fall goal. for either team, they're in the double bonus. Both have nine. Kyle Savely in the game for the Dons. He'll set up the offense. Come on, doesn't it remind you Jason Williams a little? Just a little the, bit. The bounce and the step. Drives into the paint, gives it up to Bess. He'll get it back. Plenty of time, 15 on the shot clock. He drives baseline inside to Hawkins. Who that's goal that's a goal 10 there. Kone took it off the backboard. He's going like, what, what, moi? I say moi because he is from France. 65-64. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the French word for what, though. I was going to say K, but that would be Spanish. I don't want to mix my down on the block. Hey, Can't get that one to fall, but it drops right to Oplin. He'll put it in and draw the foul from Hawkins. Boy, he hasn't done much in the second half, but that is one huge, huge basket. Don's down one. If they get the uh, ball back, they have a chance to take the lead. Kone, the good move, just couldn't get it to go. Don's look like they have it, but see Kone just barely get that finger on it to keep it alive and knock it away from Tyler Best and Oplin. Johnny on the spot. Just that little tip was all it took to get it to Oplin with 23 points now. And Justin Hawkins with the foul. Randy, that's his fifth. Well, Dane Fife gets a minute to replace him, and he's taking most of it. Shelko Edger is going to come back in now. Well, that's tough on Dane as well because you figure Justin Hawkins is a guy you want in there at right. crunch time. Just the way he hustles, fights for rebounds. I mean, he can dribble the ball up the court in a press situation. Tough loss there. Well, the other thing, too, is, Brian, that, you know, think about this. Now you've got Hawkins out of the game. Quinton Carruthers, their other most experienced player, has been out since in the first half because of an injury. So you lose your two most experienced players going down the stretch. The free throw up and in, 68-64 Valparaiso. DJ Posley is also checked into the lineup for Savely. Every possession is just huge right now. DeWitt Scott off the high glass, soft touch there, back down to a two-point Valpo lead. And that's a great lesson for any of the young players, or even you older players watching out there. He used the glass from the side. You got to use the glass, makes it a much easier shot. Inside to Kone, that one. 
Oh, oh I don't know about that one. Not sure. That was a lot of ball. A lot of ball, maybe a fingertip at best. Wow. That looked like a great double team in all ball. Even Kone's going like, got away with one there. Here we see it on the replay. Kone with a good post. He's got a lot of weight on Edrich. You're going to see him fake and come back and turn. He actually throws the elbow in. Oh, he got him on the arm a little from that angle, I'll say. But Kone got, a, got away with a good clear-out move with the elbow. They don't call that a lot, you know, and they, they teach you how to do that. It's They've been pretty move. physical in this ball game, and to call something like that really surprises me, Randy, though. Kone makes both. Back up to a four-point advantage for the Crusaders. 70-66. Again, every possession now with two and a half minutes to go is just huge. You have to get off a good shot every time if you're IPFW. Pompey brings it up. That's some fancy dribbling in the crowd there. Set, gets past the defender, dishes off to Posley. Pompey again in the corner. IPFW looking for something here. Man-to-man -man defense from Valpo. Ten on the shot clock. John's finding it rough going. Best drive to the hoop. Kone says no soup for you. One year. Get it out of here. That was Colleen. Eight on the shot clock. Dons would like to score in this possession. Just down four, still plenty of time. I look for him to set a pick on the out-of-bounds play here. Try to spring maybe Scott or Pompey for a quick shot. Here comes Scott off that pick. He's open. The shot off the mark, rebounded by Jimmy Miles. He'll we're bring gonna it give up kudos and to then the he'll there, Brian. take some time. Thank you, Professor. The nutty professor. <laughs> timeout, Valparaiso. 70 66. 30 Our second score, timeout. That's a 30 second timeout, so we're going to keep it right here, Mr. Thought, professor. Thought you were calling for my Jerry Lewis imitation there, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about I want to talk about IPFW a little bit and what we've seen. Win or lose tonight. You look at a minute 52 to go in this ballgame. Again, the play by DeWitt Scott, tying his career high with 24 points in this game. Well, here once again is that situation. shot. You see Kone with the right elbow clearing out, making some space, so he doesn't really have to clear out Edgerich too much because he just really doesn't weigh a lot. I'm really surprised we haven't seen uh, Mo in here in the second half a little more. Well, he's you know, played got a couple of minutes. And they're easy to confuse, Ezegir and Ezerich. So. I'm trying to figure it out now. That's why we call him Mo and Z. Back Makes to it win for a second, though, because I want your opinion. Here's a guy who has 24 points tonight, did in the last IPFW game. Is this going to be their go-to guy this season? Well, could be. Looking that way right now, but uh, Quentin Carruthers in the game at Southeast Missouri hit the big shot. He hit a shot with 20 seconds to go. 15-foot little fadeaway. Jordan-esque that sealed the deal. So, Back to action. Ron Howard has the ball up top. Being guarded by Pompey. Drives in the lane. That one slapped away. Bodies on the floor. Kone comes up with it. Now he will lose it. That's not the guy you want dribbling it if you're Homer Drew. Pompey pressing the action into the lane. Throws this one up off the marker. Posley in there. Scott tries to save it. Right to Oplin. Should have called a timeout there, though. I know a lot of times they're not going to let you do that this year when you're falling out of bounds calling a timeout. So Now you have to watch for the Crusaders to take just about the full shot clock time. Minute 20 to play. 24 on the clock. Also got to look for the dance to start fouling now. Miles up to Sean Huff. He'll give it up to Howard. Howard in no hurry here. You can go for a quick steal, but at some point, they're going to have to start fouling, guys. Huff on the wing. Into Oplin. Lefty hook. Can't get it to fall. Edgerich, huge rebound. IPFW still alive. Under a minute to go now, Randy. This is a must-score situation for IPFW. I thought Dane Fife might take a timeout, but he's going to let him play. A la Bob Knight rarely took a timeout. Scott takes the shot, gets it to fall, and a quick timeout by Fife. 70-68. What a game for Scott. Well, we'll take a break. You're watching IPFW Mastodon Basketball on UPN. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, 
I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. See DeWitt Scott with the stop and pop, his 26th point. That's a career high. Don's only down two. 40 seconds to go. They don't have to foul, Brian. Valparaiso by two. Lloyd to the wing. No foul Gets here. You got to play. to Oplin. Good defense. Turns that left a hook. Goes again. Boy, what a game for him. You know what, though? That's a great play by Valparaiso because that's the man you want with the ball at that point. Pompey down the court, tries to slide one to best, picked off by Oplin. Got a foul He's now. been the man of the hour, and we'll have a foul here on IPFW. 17.9 seconds, a four-point Valparaiso lead. What a huge turn of events. Oplin on the offensive side and now on the defensive well, side. Well, Oplin made a good play there on the offensive end. Now on the defense, that was not... Uh, he sort of got lucky because Pompey made a smart move by driving the ball. He was going to try to drive and dish and get a three, but he got too far under the basket, and there was nobody around except for the Crusaders, so he had no choice just to throw it in. And Oplin just happened to be the guy standing there. And then a uh, nice touch on the rim for Jared Lloyd. Gets the first free throw to go. It's a five-point game now. Just to make it a two possession game of three-pointers. Don's have to shoot the three here. Yep. No question. Savely dribbles down. Jimmy Miles right in his face. Someone's trying for anything here. Finds an opening. Fires up the three. Can't get it. Best comes down with it. Under 10 to play now. That one picked off and we're going to see a slam to finish it. Howard oh, can't he get lost a hold of it. I spoke too soon. Oh, you know, well, if you weren't, up gonna by, win this game. you weren't up by six points with a second to go, that would be highly embarrassing. But IPFW and their fans, well, take away some laughter to end this one at least. Scott will fire up the three-quarters quarter Almost off the back rim. And that we was have the a turkey final of a here. shot for yeah. the day before Thanksgiving. 74 to 68. Well, IPFW put up quite a fight here this evening, Randy, but it just fell short at one point, taking a five-point lead in the second half, but Valparaiso just too much. Flat out, it was a great ball game, Brian. Don's uh, came back, ran out of a little gas at the end, and Applin was the man at the beginning and the man down the stretch. Well, we'll take a break right now. Valparaiso, a winner tonight, 74-68. to We'll be back with the post-game show. You're watching Don's Basketball on UPN Fort Wayne. Oh, yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sideline, and it's a... If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. I made you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. 
Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Coliseum. Good evening, everyone. 74 to 68, our final score. The IPFW Mastodons falling just short against the Crusaders from Valparaiso. And what a game we had here tonight. I mean, you look at a, a tale of two games to some extent. Valparaiso <laughs> came out and they played so well in that first half, took a 27 to 10 lead. IPFW settled down a bit, ran the offense, played some solid defense, got themselves back into the game, actually took a five-point lead in the second half, but it, they just didn't have enough weapons when it came down to yeah, it. Yeah, the first game was really the first 11 minutes, and that's when uh, Valpo built a 27-10 lead, and then IPFW just got smoking hot and cut it down to 39-36 at the half, took a lead in the second half, and then uh, just sort of had a couple of bad possessions in a row. The three turnovers in a row, that was huge because, you know, you don't get off a shot, you don't score a point. Right. You look at DeWitt Scott, I mean, what a story for him. 24 points last game. Comes out again today, ends up with 26 in this ball game. I mean, I think we have a star in the making here in a Mastodon uniform. Yeah, he played a great game, but what really hurt was Quentin Carruthers getting hurt in the first half, and he couldn't play in the second half at all. And then Justin Hawkins picking up his fifth foul, and you lose your two most experienced guys. That'll kill you against a team like Valpo, with so much experience. Downs wound up shooting 35% for the game. Again, that's not going to cut it. However, 16 out of 18 from the line, that is absolutely fantastic. And they held Valpo to 43%, uh, and that's pretty good defense again. I mean, these are learning experiences for IPFW as well. They faced a very veteran team today, and that it kind of explains the second half as well. IPFW gets ahead by five in the second half. Valpo doesn't panic. They go back to the big dog, Oplin. He comes through for him down right. the stretch. And he got a point to the three turnovers in three straight possessions, and that really killed IPFW. We're going to take another quick break here. When we come back on the post-game report, we're going to have assistant coach Jeff Tungate with us, and he'll do a little better explaining than we do. <laughs> Yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sidelines, and it's a... If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Pizza! Pizza! I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back to Memorial Coliseum, everybody. Randy Shippen, Brian Bowes, now joined by associate head coach Jeff Tungate. We were just talking. It seemed like the key stretch to me in the second half there, you guys have the lead. Three unforced turnovers in a row. That's the kind of thing that makes a coach pull his hair out. You know, it really does. We, we did a lot of that tonight. It seemed like we, we did a lot of 
you know, give credit to Valpo. They did a great job, but you know, I thought we forced a lot of things that weren't there, and, and we forced ourselves to turn the ball over when we shouldn't have turned it over. And, and you know, we're not a team that's going to win games based on our talent level. We're a team that's going to have to take care of the ball, execute our offense, and do the little things to give ourselves a chance to win. And anytime you turn the ball over 19 times and three straight times, it's going to be difficult to beat a good team like Valparaiso. Is that where youth and inexperience come in, though? Because you don't have a ton of experience on this team, and you lose one of your most experienced players, Quentin Carruthers, to injury, which is temporary, we're told, in the first half. You know, I, I think maybe that's part of it, but our guys just have to step up and make plays. You know, good players make good plays, and, and tonight we didn't do that. I think we, we have to get a little tougher with the ball. We have to get, you know, overall more tough as a team, and I think that'll make a big difference. But, you know, yeah, you can chalk it up to inexperience, but I think it's the bottom line is our players have to get the job done. Coach, I'm, you're talking about inexperience. We're talking about turnovers, but what a first half comeback. Let's concentrate on the positive as well. Down by 17, your guys could have quit right then. Ended up coming back up by five in the second half. You have to be happy with them for the way they came back, especially as younger guys. I tell you what, we've got a great group of kids. We really do. Our, our kids compete. They play hard. They, they you know, they, they love to come to practice, and, and they just continue to get better. I think since from the Huntington scrimmage to our first game with Loyola yeah. Chicago, from Loyola Chicago to Southeast Missouri to tonight, I think every day you see major your improvements and, that, and that's part of a young team growing and maturing and getting better and you know obviously they could have easily quit tonight and they didn't you know but at the same time we can't afford to spot teams that kind of lead because we exert so much energy trying to come back that when we get down the stretch with five minutes to go we just don't have the energy to finish it and so we can't let teams get that far ahead of us now how do you adjust that as coaches well, I think a lot of it is just, you know, taking care of the basketball. You know, pass and catch. Sounds it, simple, it, it, you know. <laughs> it, it sounds real easy, but, you know, basketball is a simple game. And, you know, if we pass and catch and do the little things, I think that will take care of the problem. So we just need to get back to work and continue to pass and catch and continue to put pressure on the ball in practice and try to simulate, you know, game-like experience. But the, the, the bottom line is the more experience our guys get, the easier it's going to become to take care of the basketball. And, and I think that's going to come in time. But, you know, there comes a point when we just have to do it, and that time is now. I know you guys have been searching for offense. Did you maybe find more than you expected in DeWitt Scott? I tell you, DeWitt is a score. There's, there's no question about that. I mean, from the last game to the night, you know, after the first game, we were a little concerned because he wasn't making shots, but he, he obviously is an unbelievable scorer. He, he's a very good player. He's a guy that, um, you know, it just, just works hard. He's the first one in the gym. He's the last one to leave. There's no secret why he's such a good shooter. Uh, it's, shooting comes with hard work, and DeWitt's willing to put in the time to do that. You know, one thing I noticed about him and said on the air tonight is when his outside shot wasn't working that well, he immediately started taking the ball to the basket, and I know you drill that in players all the the time but a lot of times they don't do it because it's a lot easier to settle for a jump shot but he wasn't settling that's the part that's going to make DeWitt a great player. I think it's easy to guard a dead three-point shooter. If that's all you have to your game, I think it's easy to adjust and, and close out long on the ball and make him put it on the floor. But the fact that he can put the ball on the floor now a little yeah. bit, that just shows what he's capable of doing. He didn't hit a three-pointer tonight, zero for four, after four for four the other night, but he was so aggressive with the ball. In fact, the whole team kept taking the ball inside, and I think that's the way you guys want to run the offense. And I think the big thing, too, in the second half, we seem to attack without the fear of getting our shot blocked. The first half, we were going in there right. so tentative, so afraid that they're going to block our shot. You know, we tell them all the time, there's only three things that can happen after a blocked shot. One, they follow you. Two, the ball goes out of bounds. Three, they get it. Well, 67% of that's in our favor. So a blocked shot's not that big a deal. You know, <laughs> and so when we go in, we've got to make sure we go in aggressive. If they block it, they block it. You know, like just let philosophy. me say this to you right now because we, we got to go, but enjoy Thanksgiving because Sunday you got Michigan State at Michigan State, their home opener. I don't envy you that. <laughs> the schedule is definitely not in our favor. <laughs> Have a good time. Thanks for Thank joining us, Thank you. Appreciate coach. it. Thanks, Coach. All right. Hey, we'll take a break. No, that's it. We're done. We're out of here. Randy, I got to go work Randy's now. Randy's done with me, Coach. I got to go back to work, He uses brother. me for two hours and kicks me out. I got to right. go back to work. Finish it up, my friend. Thanks for watching. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Good luck to the Dons at Michigan State this weekend. We'll see you soon. We're, we've got another game coming up soon. I can't remember off the top of my head because it's <laughs> getting colder up there these days. And Do you we'll want see me to finish soon. for you? Have a great holiday. You All right, you've been watching Brian. Dons basketball. Our final score tonight. Uh, Valparaiso wins at 74-68. For Randy Schiffman, I'm Brian Bowes. Have a great holiday, everyone. Take care. This telecast of